down specifically here, look at the physical methods of control, um, and we can disturb or disrupt a lot of things about microbes if we change their environment abruptly. And some of the physical methods that are used would be moist or dry heat, cold temperatures, desiccation, radiation, and then filtration. So let's look at all of these. Um, first of all, how effective is heat? We use two types. Um, the elevated types of heat or temperatures are microbicidal. And this would be like your incinerators that we use here in the classroom. The lower temperatures are microbiostatic, which means they keep them from spreading. And this is why we refrigerate things uh, to keep it from spreading. Why? After we use the trays with the bugs in them, we put them in the refrigerator so that they stop growing or it slows them down. But with moist heat, which is the most effective, um, you're going to be able to use lower temperatures for a shorter period of time. And what it's going to do is it's going to disturb those proteins and halt cellular metabolism. With dry heat, you're going to have to use pretty moderate to high temperatures. And what you're going to do is dehydrate it, and that will alter the protein structure. This is what the incinerators do. And it causes the cells to just collapse. So here you can see um, the modes of heat and how effective they are, how long it takes. You see with moist heat, which is like our autoclaves, 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes takes care of it. But if you go down there to dry heat, you've got some like at 170 degrees for an hour, or if it's 121 degrees like it is um, in our autoclave, you got to leave it 600 minutes. Now, we viruses are pretty resistant to heat, so it won't work with viruses. Um, but bacterial endospores are the most resistant. To kill them, you're going to have to go over boiling. But the vegetative states of the bacteria are the least resistant. They're the easiest to get rid of. Thermal death time, TDT, is the shortest length of time that it takes to kill the microbes at a certain temperature. And thermal death point is the lowest temperature that's required to kill all the microbes in a sample in 10 minutes. Now the methods that we use for moist heat, we use sterilization with steam under pressure, our autoclave, as I said a while ago. This is the most efficient. Um, steam has to reach the surface of the item that you're sterilizing, and the item can't be heat or moisture sensitive. And what it does is it denatures the proteins, destroys the membranes and the DNA. It kills all the endospores and all the vegetative but because it is such a high heat and you can't autoclave everything. And this is what an autoclave looks like. We have a small one in our classroom, but you can see how it works with the steam and the chamber where it is and the pressure. We can also use non-pressurized steam. Tendalization is an intermittent sterilization if you've got a substance that can't withstand the autoclaving because of the extreme heat and the um, moisture they have to be able to be exposed to a free flowing steam for 30 to 60 minutes and then you incubate them for about 24 hours and then re-steam them and you do this for three days and they use this for some of your canned foods as well as some laboratory media. But a single exposure to that steam will not kill all the spores. You can also use boiling water for disinfection. You have to boil it, get it up to 100 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to destroy any non-spore forming pa pathogens. Pasteurization we hear about. Um, this is for disinfecting 
beverages and um, the flash we don't want to destroy the flavor of the food that we are pasteurizing and so it's a flash method where you get it up to 71.6 degrees for 15 seconds then there's non sterilization uh, which will kill anything that's not spore forming It'll lower the microbe count, but it doesn't kill the end spores and a lot of the uh, non-pathogenic microbes. And this is um, like when you have ultra-pasteurized milk. Um, it's pasteurized at 134 degrees for two to five seconds. But you need to remember, pasteurized milk is not sterile. And this is a small flash pasteurizer that they use for calf's milk. So the, this is one of those tables I mentioned that you'll need to spend some time on that kind of puts all this into perspective as far, far as how it's used and how long you have to use it and what you need to use it. can pause the slide or the video I'm sorry now if we use dry heat we got to use higher temperature incineration is has a flame or an electric heating coil our incinerators back here in the room are uh, we use those they're dry heat what it does or what incineration does it ignites and it reduces the microbes and any other substances into ashes and gas. Um, the hot air ovens, the dry ovens, which are usually electric ovens, you have heated circulated air. And it, uh, you have coils that radiate heat within an enclosed compartment. And it will coagulate proteins. So you see here what we do with the dry heat incineration and here's another table, like I mentioned, with a dry oven and incineration. Then we move to using cold. And this is going to be microbiostatic, where it slows the growth of the micro microbes. And we use refrigeration um, or freezing. And this is used for our cultures in here, our media in here, and to preserve foods. Desiccation is another one where we remove the water from the cells and it affects their metabolism. But it's not very effective to control your microbes because a lot of the cells can grow even when it, they'll start growing again if you reintroduce water. Lymphalization is freeze drying and it's for preservation. That leads us to another concepts check. Which of the following accomplishes microbiocidal effects? It's going to be more than one answer here. Killing cidal. Boiling, pasteurization, and desiccation. All three of those, A, B, and C. 